Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In the previous video, we talked a lot about the details of substitution reactions, whether the reaction occurs in one step, where the nucleophile comes from the back side of the leaving group, in this case bromide, in an SN2 reaction, or if the leaving group leaves first to form a carbocation, and then the nucleophile adds, that would be an SN1 reaction. Well, I want to talk about other competing reactions that can occur from alkyl halides, and that is the elimination of hydrogen halide from adjacent carbons of an alkyl halide. And remember that the hydrogen that comes off, the H plus that comes off, and the Br minus that comes off are on adjacent carbons. So this has to be on a neighboring carbon. It doesn't come off from the same carbon that the bromine is attached to. This is facilitated by a base because a base is what deprotonates it. And again, this reaction can occur via two different mechanisms. A two-step mechanism, which we refer to as an E1 mechanism, also through a carbocation. So the first step for an SN1 and E1 are the same. That is the bromide or the leaving group leaves from the system. Or an E2 mechanism or a bimolecular mechanism where the base is involved in taking off the proton at the same time the double bond is being formed and the bromine is coming off. We're going to look at both of these mechanisms in detail. First I want to take a look at some results from elimination reactions. In this example using 2-bromobutane we have a strong base sodium ethoxide, this is an O minus base. Alkoxide bases are generally pretty strong and so they do tend to favor elimination over a substitution reaction. So typical reaction conditions would be something like sodium ethoxide in ethanol as the solvent and what you see is a bromide that could give two different possible products because there are hydrogens adjacent to that on the left carbon and there are hydrogens adjacent to that bromine on the right carbon. So this base could take the proton from either this side leaving, leading to the product on the right or it could take the hydrogen on this side leading to the product on the left. And what we see is that we do not get an equal mixture. We get elimination to form less of the less substituted double bond and more of the more substituted double bond. And that's because the more substituted the double bond is, the more stable it is. And the reaction mechanism favors the formation of the more stable double bond. This is what we refer to as Zaitsev's rule that elimination occurs to form the most substituted double bond preferentially. Or in other words, the hydrogen on the carbon with the fewest hydrogens is lost preferentially. Um, this has a lot to do with the transition states leading to the formation of more or less substituted double bonds and their differences in energies. Well, the elimination of HBr from an alkane can occur via two different mechanisms. In a two-step process, or the E1 mechanism, it's exactly the same first step as an SN1 process. The bromide bond breaks to form an intermediate carbocation, and that carbocation then can undergo elimination of an adjacent hydrogen with the base, whatever base we are using in the reaction, to take the hydrogen off and form the double bond. And in this case, this two-step process has, again, as the rate-determining step, just the formation of the carbocation by loss of the halogen. The base is not involved in the rate-determining step. In contrast, we can have an E2 mechanism where the reaction occurs by one step, where the base that we are using in the reaction is taking off the proton at the same time the electrons are coming down to form the double bond and kicking off the bromine. So all of these are happening in one step to give the product alkene and elimination of H and Br from adjacent carbons. Here's a little bit better picture of the E2 mechanism which is happening all in one step. Here you can see the base starting to form a bond with the hydrogen the electrons from that hydrogen carbon bond are flowing down to form the new double bond whereas the halide is leaving. In the transition state for this reaction those bonds are beginning to form at this point and this point and then these bonds are starting to break and all this is happening in one step to form the double bond halide and the conjugate acid of the base that we started with. This reaction relies on both the concentration of the base and the alkyl halide. Thus the rate expression involves both. So it's second order, so it's a bimolecular reaction, hence the designation in elimination bimolecular or E2 mechanism.
one thing to note about this reaction is that there is an orientation requirement for this to happen. The hydrogen on the adjacent carbon and the leaving group have to be 180 degrees apart and lined up, what we refer to as anti periplanar. So this bond has to be in the same plane as this bond and lined up 180 degrees for that elimination to take place. And we can see that in this side view because if you're going to form a bond to the hydrogen, the electrons have to flow opposite of the leaving group. And that double bond then is forming in a system like this. And the only way that can happen is if the hydrogen and the halide are on opposite sides. This requirement for that particular geometry can be seen in a lot of different systems. They have to be anti-coplanar, which is this structure on the right. In any of the other conformations, it's not possible to do the elimination reaction under E2, such as I've shown here. And we can see this in certain stereoisomers of cyclohexanes. For example, if we look at this molecule where we have a large tertiary butyl group in this position, we want to prefer an equatorial position and a bromine. And if that's the cis isomer, this is an axial bromide. And in the trans isomer where this group is up and the bromine is down, this is now an equatorial bromide. It turns out that the bromine that's axial eliminates 500 times faster. And that's because the hydrogens on the adjacent carbons, there's one that is lined up 180 degrees apart, anti-periplanar to the bromine, whereas in this case, the hydrogens on the adjacent carbons to the bromine are both 60 degrees apart, not 180 degrees apart. So it's much more difficult for this structure on the right to undergo elimination. It would actually have to do a ring flip to put a large bulky group like this tertiary butyl group and the bromine in an axial position so that you can have an axial hydrogen next to it 180 degrees apart. Only under the higher energy conformation can it undergo elimination reactions. Thus it demonstrates directly the requirement for this orientation of leaving groups to be 180 degrees apart from the hydrogen that's being taken off. Well, without a really strong base present, alkyl halides can undergo eliminations if they can form stable carbocations. So substrates such as tertiary halides that can easily form carbocations can undergo an E1 mechanism where the leaving group simply leaves to form the carbocation and then in the second step the base takes off a hydrogen to form the double bond. This is an E2 one elimination mechanism because the rate of the reaction depends only on the concentration of the alkyl halide and not on the concentration of the base. The rate determining step is the first step, not the second step. So here you can see again a, an example of this reaction. If we take 2-bromo-2-methylbutane and just heat that up in ethanol, there's no strong base present. Heated up in ethanol, we do see the elimination product, again, favoring the more substituted double bond over this double bond on the end because, according to Zaitsev's rule, we're forming the more stable, more substituted double bond. Well, some of the difficulties in these reactions in gray areas comes in when we're trying to decide whether these alkyl halides will undergo substitution reactions or elimination reactions. And here you can see some examples of that where we have a secondary bromide 2-bromopropane in the presence of sodium ethoxide in ethanol, we see the majority of the reaction is the elimination reaction that went via mechanism E2. And a substitution reaction is the minor product where we have exchanged the bromine for the OCH2CH3 group. Now that would be the result of an SN2 reaction. Notice what happens if instead of a secondary bromide, we simply move the bromine to the end, primary bromide. SN2 reactions will occur more readily because it's less crowded, and that's exactly what we see in the result. Now the major product is the substitution reaction via SN2, and the elimination reaction is the minor product. So in some cases, the specific substrate and the competition between substitution and elimination depends on all of those factors that we talked about that affect the reaction rates. So in general, if you have primary or secondary halides, SN2 occurs when you have good nucleophiles, when you have really good nucleophiles but that are not very basic.
E2 occurs when you have stronger bases. So if you compare something like cyanide or S minus compounds, those are better nucleophiles than O minus compounds. Alkoxides, hydroxides tend to be a little bit stronger bases and less nucleophilic. So E2 elimination tends to compete there. If you have tertiary halides, they could go through SN1 or E1 mechanisms and E1 occurs uh, in the case where you have some negative charges or you have some, some any kind of basicity, but oftentimes SN1 reactions can occur. It's a little bit more difficult to distinguish with tertiary halides whether SN1 or E1 will be favored. With tertiary halides, E2 reactions can also occur because unlike an SN2 reaction that requires a nucleophile to approach the carbon and it would be blocked, elimination reaction only requires a base to approach a hydrogen on an adjacent carbon and that's still freely available out in space. So in order to do an E2 elimination, all you need is a strong base. It can work just fine with tertiary halides. So that's the one difference between our substrate dependence for substitution versus elimination. And here you can see this difference. If you have a little bit more hindered SN2 versus um, reaching the hydrogen E2, the E2 elimination would predominate if you have a good strong base. So obviously if your base is more bulky, then that would favor elimination over substitution as well. In this case, we can even get substitution to predominate in a primary halide substrate. So in this case, if we have a primary bromide where substitution occurs readily, if we use something like methoxide, this methoxide could easily do SN2 substitution to form the OCH3 compound, the substitution. However, if our base becomes really bulky, let's say we take this O minus compound where we now have this large group on here, you see the minor product is the direct substitution, the major product is the elimination. Again, that's because it's easier to reach the adjacent hydrogens with the base than it is to attack the carbon, even a primary carbon. And here's an example of a system that shows virtually no elimination because cyanide, CN- is such a good nucleophile and the conditions are right here for doing an SN2 substitution. So this secondary chloride undergoes substitution to replace chlorine with the CN group. And with tertiary substrates where we can form carbocations from something like this uh, tertiary bromide we can see that in the absence of any kind of base present at all, just in ethanol as the solvent, you heat that up, you see the major product is the substitution product. Eliminations are very minor. Whereas if we introduce even just a tiny concentration of something that has a little bit of a more basic nature, such as a sodium ethoxide, then the competing elimination reactions will take place through an E2 mechanism as opposed to E1 versus SN1. be able to figure this out for every single case that you encounter. However, there are some obvious features which can indicate what will be the major pathway. When you have SN1 versus E1 reactions, those all have to occur from tertiary substrates. Although it could be possible with secondary, most likely it's not going to happen with secondary. But if you have a tertiary substrate, formation of a carbocation is possible and that could afford either the substitution product in the second step or the elimination product in the second step. So at least you could know that a tertiary carbocation will not give you an SN2 substitution. Whereas a primary secondary substrate would favor SN2 substitution when you have good nucleophiles or if you have good strong bases like alkoxides those would favor generally E2 eliminations. E2 eliminations can also occur on tertiary substrates when you have a strong base present. And in all these cases, there are some gray areas and there are a lot of gray areas that it's difficult to determine the pathway and you will have mixtures of products from these competing pathways, particularly when you have secondary substrates because there it becomes a little bit more difficult to determine which pathway is gonna go, substitution or elimination via carbocations or by direct 
one-step reactions. Just to give you some ideas of some of the competitions, um, I have three different substrates here, a primary bromide, a secondary bromide, and a tertiary bromide. In this case, we can see that in path A here for the top case, we have sodium cyanide, a really great nucleophile, an aprotic polar solvent, HMPA. It's going to do an SN2 reaction, substituting the bromine for the nitrile, the nucleophile that's present in sodium cyanide. Whereas if we have a very bulky base, this potassium tertiary butoxide, it looks like this. It's a very bulky base. It's going to favor elimination. And so the major product you would expect in this case would be the elimination product of an E2 reaction. The secondary bromide, we have a weak base, which is the sodium carboxylate. So this is the salt of acetic acid. That's going to be a weak base and might be expected to do more SN2 reactions, whereas if you have sodium ethoxide, it's going to be a strong base. You're going to expect mostly E2 elimination. Tertiary substrate, strong base, it will give E2 elimination to form the more substituted in this case. And without any negatively charged species with, meth with ethanol, it's possible to do an SN1 substitution where we end up with substitution of the bromine for the nucleophile, in this case ethanol solvent.